Oh, okay. So next is, uh, <laughs> sorry, next is Helga <laughs> Sandoval, a dear friend. Helga works with uh, Carrie Solomon. She's the director of research at the Carolina Eye Care Physicians and is an adjunct professor of ophthalmology at the Storm Eye Institute um, at Medical University of South Carolina in Charleston. She's worked with Carrie Solomon for the last 17 years. And for many years, uh, Dr. Solomon and uh, Dr. Sandoval's practice has probably had some of the best refractive outcomes in the world. For the last 15 years, I've been looking at physician databases. We're up to 280,000 implantations. And this practice is one of the top five practices uh, in the world for outcomes. Dr. Sandoval has over 45 peer-reviewed publications and has given more than 150 presentations. And what she's going to share with us is some of her initial data with version two of the RBF calculation method. Dr. Sandoval. Uh, thank you, Dr. Hill. Thank you um, to everybody for being here uh, this time. And yes, I'm going to show you uh, the process that we uh, currently have uh, using the RBL, RB, the Hill RBF formula to see where, how you can get to where we are. This is my financial disclosure, nothing relevant to this uh, presentation. So here is what we have. We currently have the Lenstar, and uh, we have version one of the formula. And we have uh, aligned the lenses that we currently use uh, for the uh, SN60 WF. We have um, the Hegis, the Barrett, as well as the Olsen and the Hill RBF. And we compare, um, you know, we make sure, as Dr. Snyder, uh, Snyder nicely showed, that all the measurements are consistently, and if we see a difference, we confirm that that difference indeed is there. And we compare the powers. You can see a difference maybe of a half diopter between the different formulas, but if you see something more than that, something is going on in there. Uh, but now, uh, version one doesn't have the uh, capability of doing monovision or any uh, other target than plano. So in that case, uh, when we have these patients, we go to the online calculator, and we just enter the information as it is required. And then we can have here uh, our measurement for a monovision patient. And here we can see the printout uh, from the online calculator, very similar to the printout that you obtained from the Lenstar, but now we have um, our patient's calculation. Uh, one thing that we uh, love about the formula is if there is a measurement that it doesn't make any sense at all, it warns us that you know the measurement is out of bounds, that we should be careful or not to use that uh, power based on the formula. Now here are the outcomes. So here we start working with Dr. Hill back in 2014, 2015. Um, this is the results of the retrospective uh, study that he did. And at that time we were with a monofocal lens about 97.5 within half diopter of uh, the target refraction and 95% with the thotic lenses. Now here is where we are three years later. Uh, where our outcome within half diopter is uh, 98% with both the um, monofocal lens as and the thotic EDOF lens that we are currently using. And our outcomes at within quarter of diopter are uh, steadily improving as well. Uh, our, all our patients are 100% within three quarters of diopter of the intended target. But how we get there, that is the question. So the first thing that I will recommend you is track your outcomes, but track the numbers. Don't think that, okay, my patients are happy, I'm doing good, that's good, no. Track your outcomes, know where you are, and define where do you want to go, where do you want to be. Now the other key, as it has been uh, stressed during this presentation, is the preoperative measurements. You need to have a very good biometer like the Lenstar. Uh, you need to make sure that the surface of your patient is healthy. If there is dryness, dry eyes, you have to make sure that you optimize that ocular surface before you actually do the measurements for the um, surgery. Use the validation criteria, as Dr. Snyder uh, said. Make sure you train your text to do that properly. And repeat, 
If you are not happy with the measurements, repeat. I can tell you that I'm the tech least favorite person in the practice because I make them repeat the testing. Unfortunately, patients have to come back for that purpose, but um, it is their outcome at the end um, of the surgery. And then, of course, the IOL powered calculation formulas. Um, we have to have modern formulas to get to better outcomes and to provide what is best for our patients. Uh, but now what is the next step? Can we improve our uh, goal to uh, quarter of diopter, increase that uh, percentage? Probably we could do with the modern technology, um, new lenses, new things coming up in the market. Uh, I think that can be done. One thing that I also wanted to say is there is a difference. We just finished a um, multi-centered study using a TORIC EDOF lens. Um, of course, it's a study. The protocol is the same. All practices have to follow the same um, criteria. We were expecting to see the outcomes of all the sites um, about the same within that half diopter. And we have one site that is at 78%, while we got a 98%. So why is that difference? We are using the same formulas, we are using the same device, why we have 20% difference between uh, these outcomes. So again, preoperative measurements, validation criteria, and repeat as if you need. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Helga. <clears throat> In, in the last few minutes, I'm going to just share with you some things that may be transformative in ophthalmology. What's happening is we've all seen the calculation methods getting better. Barrett was really transformative for us, and I think the RBF method may have something to add as well. But industry is also responding right now, and we're starting to see uh, rumblings of exact IOL powers by uh, hyper-accurate methods to within a thousandth of a diopter. This is off-the-shelf technology. And then the keratometry may be getting better and better and better with newer methodologies. And I think when these two things begin to happen, we'll see another incremental change. So again, this is an exciting time for ophthalmology. We now have calculation methods and, and measurement technology that's very, very good. And in my opinion, if your half diopter accuracy that you track is less than 90% with the lens star and the different measurement technologies or, and um, calculation technologies available to you, you're probably doing something wrong. So this is completely achievable right now with current technology. So I want to, want to thank all of, our, all of our speakers today and to all of you for taking time to be with us, and I hope you have a good meeting. Thank you.